Uh, question here from Felix Torres. Felix Torres asks, what's the difference between VBAT, BEC, 9 volt, etc.? When do I use one over the other? Uh, Felix Torres, um, the number one thing that needs to happen when thinking about voltage is that the voltage you give to a given device needs to be within its input voltage range. So if we look at uh, uh, let's look at this video transmitter. This video transmitter is the Rush Tank Solo. When we look at this, we can find a specification. Hey, Drone Mesh, what's he been up to? When did he, did he post? You posted lately, Drone Mesh? Ooh, ooh, that's not a good look. One year ago, I will edit your FPV videos on Fiverr. Uh, hasn't posted since. <laughs> he must have got super successful on Fiverr. It's always a wonder when people drop off, where did they go? What are they doing? They just disappear. You know, they say someday will be the last time you pick up your, your child. You know, you never know when that day will be. They'll get to be too big and you won't pick them up anymore and be like, oh, so cherish every moment. Someday will be the last YouTube video that every YouTuber ever posts. When will it be? I don't know. Uh, going back here to the question about voltage. If we go down 7 to 36 volt input, right? It says right there. That's what it's non-negotiable. It's not negotiable. 7 to 36 volts input. So now, can you run that off of battery voltage? Well, what is your battery voltage? If your battery is a 1S battery, that's going to be at most 4.2 volts and at least about 3.0 volts. Is that voltage range within the 7 to 36 volts that this video transmitter requires? No, it's not. So that won't work. Now, the idea of a 7 to 36 volt video transmitter is that it will run off of basically a 2S battery up to a 6S battery without needing any voltage regulator. Oof. That's true. RIP Project Blue Falcon. Literally RIP. He was a good dude. What's his last video? What was his last video? He, uh, he died in a motorcycle accident five years ago. Video's coming soon. Promise. Oh, ouch. That sucks. And when somebody's not posting and then they do a video's coming soon. Promise. And then videos don't come. He started vlogging. He used to make great content. And then uh, his last video was a liftoff simulator review. There you go. 93K views. That's a lot of freaking views. Okay, going back to the question about voltage. So let's say we have a... Let's say we have a video transmitter like the TBS Unify Race. What's the input voltage for this? Let's look. 2 to 6S. Crap, that's not what I wanted. Sorry, hang on. <laughs> what about the TBS Unified Nano? What's the input voltage for this? 4.5 volts to 5 volts only. So, if you try to run this off of VBAT, it will fry. Or it will be underpowered. A 1S battery will not have a high enough voltage. A 2S battery and up will fry it because it will be more than 5 volts. Okay? So you would need to run this off a 5-volt regulator. That would be basically your only choice. So in essence, what you need to do is you need to look at the voltage range, the input voltage range for your device, and then you need to give it the correct voltage that it wants. Now, here's, here's where things get interesting. Sometimes you have a device like the TV, like the... Uh, TBS Unify HV, like the Rush Tank Solo, like the Cadex Vista, that can take anywhere from, let's say, 7 volts up to 26 volts. 
and you've got a 9 volt regulator on your flight controller. So in this case, you could use battery voltage or you could use that 9 volt regulator. Which one should you use? If you use battery voltage, there will be more electrical noise getting to the device and sometimes that makes it perform worse. If you use the voltage regulator, if the voltage regulator is undersized, it could brown out and and you could it could the device could reboot or or stop working properly. So as long as the voltage regulator is correctly sized for the amount of power that your your device will draw, it's usually better to use a voltage regulator, but with certain high powered devices, sometimes the voltage regulators on your flight controller can't handle them and it's better to run it off of VBAT. So hopefully that's some helpful information.